Hello there. As you can see, I am not in my normal book location as we are on the road. So I am coming to you from our big old pickup truck and our camper is parked behind us and we are traveling across the country. And in my next video, I will give you all the details about where we're going, why we're going, and take you on some book finding fun. So for today, I wanted to chat with you for a minute about a previous book that I found on an adventure while we were away a while back. Um, we were in Boise, Idaho for a wedding and since I was there, of course, I decided to go look for books um, in thrift stores to see what I could find. So usually I don't um, pay much attention to paperback books. I'll, I'll scan them real quick, but we were on vacation. I was taking my time, and so I was looking through a section of paperback books in a thrift store when I came across this book. I won't show you the title yet, but you can see it's rather plain. Uh, no illustrations, uh, inside or out. Just a very plain book. I thought maybe this was like a self-published book that somebody had done and I was about to put it back on the shelf when I noticed this part up here at the top that says uncorrected proof. I had never heard of that and so it got me interested and then the title an Afghanistan picture show or how I saved the world. This is by William T. Volman. I had not heard of this book or this author, who is actually rather famous, um, but at the time I hadn't heard of him. So this created enough of a mystery, and then when I opened the book, I noticed it's been signed by the author. I love a signed book. So now I had to buy it, so I did. Over the next few days, I looked into what an uncorrected proof is. So what that is, is a printed copy of a book that has been edited and formatted, but still needs to be reviewed by the author or possibly others, which means it still could be changed. There seems to be some debate about whether you can sell an uncorrected proof. Some say yes, some say no, others say you can, but you have to wait till it's out of print. Um, but since eBay has a drop-down box for uncorrected proofs, I'm going to say it's okay. If you have insight into this topic, please leave me a comment. I'd love, I've lo I'd love to learn more about uncorrected proofs. So as I was gathering information about this uncorrected proof, I also looked up information about William T. Volman. Um, he has had a very successful writing career, and he has led a really intriguing life. Between the info about him and the info about the book, I decided I wanted a published copy. So I went ahead and purchased the published, which is the other thing I found out is yes, this uncorrected proof did end up being published. Um, and so I wanted to be able to read it in this format as it was published and then also compare it to the uncorrected proof. And it is kind of interesting. Let me just show you a couple of things that I noticed. There's one section particularly that looks like there was some consideration in doing it differently. So it's kind of fun because it is literally old school, glued, copy and pasted in one of these sections. Now as I go back through and I compare it to the published edition, I can see that even though they put a, an alternate version in this book, it looks like they went ahead and kept it as it was printed. They didn't take this pasted version and, and move it into the actual um, published version. But it is interesting to see what the difference was. That is the main difference inside the book, just this one section. And then also you'll notice when you're comparing them that um, in the published edition, Volman has um, sketches of people he spoke to um, for this book and and some of the areas and maps. So I should tell you just a little bit about it so you understand what I mean when I say these sketches, but they're pretty fun too to see his sketches as well. Volman was 22 in 1982 and he wanted to understand the situation going on in Afghanistan and with the Russian invasion there. So there were a lot of different groups fighting each other at the time in that part of the world, and he wanted to know for himself who the good guys were. 
um, and then relay that information back to the U.S. government so that we could support the group that was most deserving is what he was trying to do. He also wanted to take photos and then use those photos as a means to raise awareness, but also to help raise money for the cause. So with this ide idealistic goal in mind, he actually, I mean, he took action and traveled to Pakistan where he spent a lot of time interviewing locals and surprisingly high-ranking uh, officials in an attempt to understand the situation and find a group to go with um, into Afghanistan. Uh, in the end, when he finally did make it to Afghanistan, things did not go to plan. He spent much of his time battling dysent dysentery, feeling sick and miserable, trekking around Afghanistan in various dangerous situations um, with the group he was with having to help him more than he was able to help the group. My thoughts about the book is that I'm, I'm really glad Volman um, published the book. He received a lot of criticism for this little adventure that he went on and he admits that it was ill-conceived. Even so, I can appreciate the good intentions that he had, and I find it commendable that when his youthful plan fell apart, it didn't stop him from telling the story. I found the information about the different groups and the nuance of relationships between them enlightening. Um, it illuminates the slippery slope that governments play on when um, determining what group to assist in times of conflict. Uh, I found it interesting to have the story told from the perspective of Volman, who was just a young man with no real political agenda, who just wanted to find a way to help the Afghan people. Volman didn't publish the book um, for several years after he returned home, and as a result, he refers to himself as the young man throughout the book which allows the older Volman to comment on the younger version of himself. I like this because it shows the process of learning that I think we all go through. Um, in our youth, we see the world and make sense of it based on our limited experiences. Then as we live longer and gain more experience, we often recognize that we didn't know as much as we thought we knew when we were young. Isn't life just an ongoing crazy mystery? Another mystery is where are the photos that Volman took during his adventure? I thought I might find them online or find information about a previous showing or a, uh, an ongoing showing of them, but I haven't found anything anywhere about the photos. Please, if you have information about where those can be viewed, please leave it in the comments. I'd, I'd love to, to take a look at those photos. Well, like the question of how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop, the world may never know how that uncorrected proof ended up in a thrift store in Boise, Idaho. But it sure was fun finding it there. I've provided some links in the description to an interview that Volman gave about his adventure along with a few other items of interest for you to take a look at. And then also feel free to take a look at my eBay bookstore. The link is also in the description. It was nice chatting with you and we'll chat with you later.